it is all about U.S. earnings, but uh, in South Africa, we've also got a few retailers set to release results this morning, also some companies in the resource space. But yesterday, we had Vodacom... Uh, giving out a trading update saying that headline earnings per share will probably be 10% lower. Were you surprised at that number? Well, I think the big surprise in, in, the, uh, in the Vodacom numbers yesterday was more, uh, you know, the below the line stuff. Um, the headline earnings down 10 to 20% was a surprise. Um, if, you if you look above the line, the revenue is up 10% or is going to be up when they report 10%. Their EBITDA, if you move just a little bit low in the financial statements, up 8%. That's all well and good, and, and that probably, you know, in the, in the current times that we're in, mm. fairly okay. Um, but then you get below that, they had impairments, they impaired their uh, gateway acquisition, 3.2 billion rand uh, of impairments, gateway making up most of that. They only bought that not so long ago for 5.7 billion. So I think that was the big surprise for the market uh, and why we saw the, um, the share losing a bit of ground yesterday. Mm. It was down 4.5% in yesterday's yes. session. There was some reversals of, of tax mm. assets and things like that. So the bottom line, the earnings per share number right at the bottom, uh, looks to be down 95 to 105%. So that, uh, that really was a surprise for the market yesterday. And it seems that there's more bad news uh, in line for uh, the telecom sector, especially regarding those interconnect fees. And now we know the Competition Commission is also uh, looking into price collusion between the big telecoms companies. Are you concerned that this is going to further put a dampener on the likes of Vodacom and MTN? Well, it certainly puts them in the spotlight, um, and I think some of them are squealing a little bit more than mm. others, and uh, I think it's going to affect their earnings in, in different ways. Um, but uh, the bottom line is it will impact the earnings to, to some degree. Mm. I think the uncertainty for investors is they're not really sure how much. We don't know where that interconnect fee is going to settle. Um, you know, it's a revenue and an expense uh, for those companies, so we're not sure where, where it's going to net off. And, and what the net result is going to be. Well, speaking of companies being under the spotlight by the Competition Commission, because right now the Competition Commission is looking into basically uh, every sector. Pick and pay, uh, of course the retailers mm. at the stage also under the spotlight. We've got pick and pay set to release results today. What are you looking for in those numbers? Well, it's the interim numbers and um, I think, you know, just the key things when we, when we go to the pick and pay numbers, we really want to look at, uh, at what's happening to their, their score supermarkets, uh, you know, the loss making side, the busy converting some of those stores. Mm -hmm. so to the pick and pay model. To, to the pick mm -hmm. and pay model. So we need to see, um, you know, there, you know, we're not sure about what's continuing operations, what's, you know, what's discontinued. Um, I think, you know, looking at some of the other things, what's happening in Franklin's in Australia, just recently turned um, positive um, after quite a, a number of years of losses. So again, just what's the strategy there and, and how they're doing there. And um, I think just overall, um, you know, feel for the, for the local um, environment. The, the pick and pay shares haven't done that well this year uh, in terms of the market. Um, probably up 9 or 10 percent, um, you know, lagging the 20 percent out of, of the market growth. Um, but I think that's reflective of, of lower food inflation does tend to squeeze your margin a bit when, when food prices are coming down or, or there's um, lower inflation. Um, so we need to see how that's impacted their margin going forward as well. Well, just turning our attention now to ShopRite because we know that Pick and Pay has been lagging the likes of ShopRite and ShopRite has been taking quite mm -hmm. a significant chunk out of their market share as well. Uh, your uh, expectations on the like of the cash and the food retailers at this stage because we know that ShopRite has been doing well. They've gotten the Africa story right and their margins are much higher than the likes of Pick and Pay. Yes, I think it's still a concern for all of those food retailers about you know where we're going with uh, with food price inflation because that when that comes lower it does squeeze the margins a bit. I think the likes of Shoprite, you know, they have the bit of the furniture business as well. Uh, there is an element of of credit there as well, um, and you know as the cycle's turning, as the the low interest rate environment kicks in, we start seeing more of those sales. Um, you know, it should continue to boost the likes of of Shoprite. I think we still like pick and pay. Uh, probably trading at a historic P of, of more 19 when the shop routes are probably closer to 16. So always at a premium to the market. Um, you know, we always expect good things, long-term growth out of these companies. And you know, they generally don't disappoint over the longer term. Click set to release results tomorrow and uh, viewed as a relatively defensive company because we know when uh, we are cutting down on spending, us women still go and buy those <laughs> lipsticks and that makeup. And also just keeping in mind that Clicks has also got that uh, drug uh, element to it and you walk in and you can get everything in one shop. Uh, your view on those numbers because at this stage of the game we know that they have been faring quite well despite the downturn. 
Now, Clix has been going through a transformation over, over a number of years, and, and they put in a new CEO. Uh, well, he's not new anymore, but he's, you know, he's, he's changed the, um, the way things work a little. They've always tried to um, model themselves on, on the Boots model in the UK. So when you go into your drugstore for your, uh, for your prescription, you come out with a toaster uh, as <laughs> well and, uh, and a couple of sweets from the, from the till. And uh, they seem to have got that bottle right, but I think the regulatory environment there has also been a bit tricky mm -hmm. for them um, and, and for everybody in that space. Um, and then I think they've had some other challenges in, in UPD, the distribution uh, business. So that's what we look to see uh, you know, where they're going with that at the moment. But certainly all the restructuring, um, the reshaping, re, you know, redesigning of the whole Clex group um, ha has served them well. So we're looking for a positive result. We've got a strong rand. We've got very weak retail sales. Contraction is 7% for the month of August. We've got an inflation environment that's changing quite rapidly with oil prices rising and, of course, Eskom seeking a tariff hike as well. MPC decision tomorrow. Quite a difficult one, wouldn't you say? I think they'll have a, a fair chat and then leave <laughs> things uh, unchanged. Um, you know, the outlook for inflation, uh, you know, they have a two-year uh, window, which they look at. They see the, uh, the CPI going into the target range, I think, the third quarter of 2010. And that good news is, is already in the rates we've got at the moment. So I think all of those other inflationary concerns uh, are more likely to, you know, to, to start making them think in time about putting up rates, not bringing rates down.